Hi, this is my story about my mom. Hugging my Scottish mom is like getting a pat from a tripod. She is a no fuss, no muss, tell it like it is, jeopardy watching, crossword loving traveler. She allows herself 10 potato chips on a Friday. After lunch, she'll eat three marshmallows. Her dessert for the last 50 years has been diet jello and ice cream. She only reads books with happy endings and she loves a bargain. She doesn't care a bit about housework. She loves to dance. She's capital D dependable. She's 88, independent, bossy, and opinionated. And her opinion is, I think the world is coming to an end, Michelle. And now it just might be. August 6, 2020, she has a massive stroke. She is a heap of old flabby flesh on the hospital bed. A tube's coming out of her nose and her left arm is tied down. Her right side doesn't move and it is so painful. The slightest touch makes her wince. I rub her with lotion and people's prayers trying to patch her. She's desperate to tell me something, but her words are a jumbled mess. I sh sh And then to my brother, she says, I can't take this 10 times and is incoherent again. They change her diaper and treat her like she's nothing more than a log. I buy face paints and in purple I write, my name is Mary and in green, please be kind. In pink, in a pink heart, we love you, mom. I pray for her to die. A teenage looking doctor is telling me we have to decide whether we take feeding tubes out or not. Teenage doctor says, we can take the tubes out and stop feeding her and her body will shut down and it'll take about three to four weeks for her to die. My stomach drops. I can't breathe. I go into the hallway and cry. I want to take my mom to the vet and have her put to sleep like I did with the cat. We take the tube out. I feed her pureed mush and thickened water. I can't starve my mom to death. I'm given the humongous task of finding a place for my broken mom to live. I spend days looking for a nursing home that will allow visitors and have all the equipment she needs. COVID has made this mostly impossible. They tell me I must make an appointment. They tell me I must wear a mask. They tell me we must be two meters apart. They tell me my brother cannot see her. They tell me this is for everyone's safety. The home reminds me of a nice hotel, except she's in the locked ward with the dementia patients so my brother might see her through the window. Some of the staff are nice, but they don't know my mom. I look through her window and I see her in bed. She is trapped in her body, unable to do anything for herself. And then there is a COVID outbreak. No visitors allowed, reads the sign at the front door. I'm essential, I plead. They tell me there is nothing they can do. They are following the orders. I hate the orders. I hate the orders. I want to bring her home. People try and dissuade me. My mom would say to me, I'll save my breath to cool my soup, Michelle. You'll do what you want anyways. So on December 12th, she is strapped to a gurney and brought to our home. I go down and kiss her several times a day. I stroke her hair and rub her feet. This is the first time in our lives together that I can touch her like this. She sits in her bed, fluffed pillows under her parts of her lame body. She is now using her beautiful left hand to feed herself. She eats pizza, a hamburger, and her favorite jello and ice cream. All the things the hospital told us not to do. She's watching old movies on the TV. The cat lays on her feet. Communicating is difficult. It's a guessing game. And she gets mad at me when I guess wrong. You want me to change the channel? No! But when I finally get it right, we celebrate the volume. Oh, you want the volume up? Yes! She somehow lets me know that she wants to get new glasses. So the process begins. Operation, get my mom to the optometrist. This simple event takes hours of preparation. We get ramps made. We get special adaptive clothing. We buy a wheelchair. We get it fitted. So February 5th, 2021, 
We push my mom's 175 pound body into her new clothes. We put lipstick on her, her earrings on, do her hair. She has always been such a smart dresser. We hoist her like a side of beef into her wheelchair. Seat belt strapped, she insisted. Uh, down the ramp and through the barely big enough hallway in and around the barely big enough corner and we park her into the laundry room while we put down the final wooden ramp into the carport and we push her out the door. We are out the door. I'm taking my mom to the optometrist. I feel like we are Olympic athletes and we have just won the gold medal. This trip is as grand to me as going to the Taj Mahal. In my mind, there are fireworks exploding and the bagpipes are playing. I am so happy she's alive. Thank you.